Hello, everyone. Welcome to Wellness Wednesdays with Stephanie podcast. I am here today with my friend and colleague, Dr. Rachel Crowley. I'm so excited about this conversation. And I would just love to dive in with an introduction, Rachel. What do you do? How do you serve the world? So thank you for having me, Stephanie. So I'm Dr. Rachel Crowley. I'm a naturopathic medical doctor. Some people know what that is, some people don't. So I like to say what it is. It's, an, it's a doctor that blends modern science and natural traditional healing together. We begin by discovering the root cause of why you're feeling the way you're feeling. And instead of covering up your symptoms, we try to discover the root cause and use a variety of different modalities to help support your body and promote innate healing of your body through nutrition, lifestyle change, and supplementations, just to name a few. Wonderful. And thank you for doing what you're doing in the world. It is so needed. I am curious about why you got into naturopathic medicine. What led you in that, in that degree path? Yeah. So I actually had my own health journey that I went through. I struggled with burnout and crushing exhaustion. I dreaded the sound of the alarm clock. I was so exhausted, took all of my energy and power just to get up in the morning. One time I even physically unplugged and took out the batteries and I had a backup. So I was so exhausted and crushed. I feel hit by the train every time I woke up. It was just so exhausting throughout the day and took me several hours just to feel half awake. And my usual state of being was just was just tired. And I felt like a watered down version of myself because I used to be very active. I was a dancer. So that was not me. And so that was a journey that I had to go through and I had to figure out what was happening with my body because I wasn't feeling like myself. And so once you figured out everything, like all the different testing and other different specialty testing and trying to figure out what was happening in our body, I was able to heal. So I had adrenal fatigue and burnout was exhausting and crushing. And so because I, I've overcome that, I am committed to helping others go from feeling exhausted and overwhelmed to finally feel like themselves again and thrive in life. My mission is to help others as well because we all deserve the energy to live the life we love. Absolutely. That is so very important. And my message on this podcast is all about optimal wellness and getting us to a thriving point because I do not believe survival is where we need to be as a human race. I think that we can all get to a healthier lifestyle. And I just want to be an inspiration for that as far as how we live and how we interact with the world. <laughs> so burnout is definitely relevant to this conversation because there is so much burnout in the world. People have adrenal exhaustion just from living their day-to-day -day lives. They don't even know that they're right. completely stressed out. They have right. no idea. So I would love to talk with you about this today. Um, we talked about reducing burnout mm -hmm. and the types of stress in the world. So I'd love to dive in and just let you have the floor, Rachel. Yeah. So before that, I'd like to ask you some questions. I want to ask, can you relate to any of these following, these five things? So one, feeling exhausted all the time, no matter how much rest or sleep you get. Mm, not really. Okay. Have you, have you at least, or at least someone you know experienced that? I have in the past, but not at this point. Okay. Two, struggling to get up in the morning and crashing throughout the day. I remember that feeling. I do struggle sometimes. Yeah. Feeling overwhelmed, stressed, and struggling to relax. Sometimes. <laughs> feeling tired all day, yet unable to sleep at night. Mm, not really. Okay. Anyone you know might experience those? Um, yeah, there are a few people in my life that I can I can see that. And lastly, rely on caffeine to fuel you throughout the day. Well, if I drink too much caffeine, I'm in trouble. I don't sleep. So I, I modify that behavior with water. But um, I do know people that drink coffee all day, namely my mom, actually. She'll drink coffee all the way until six o'clock at night and always blew me away. How can you sleep yeah. on caffeine? <laughs> 
So these are just a few things of how people can experience their burnout because there are just so many different varieties and so many different ways that they're tired and wired, they're just exhausted. So there are just so many different ways that burnout can present with people. And so I want to talk a little bit about stress. So stress affects our bodies in many different aspects. And stress is a silent killer. If it's left unchecked, it can lead to a serious health condition and increase your risk of heart disease, high blood pressure, heart attack, diabetes, gut health, lowering your immune system, making you more susceptible to viruses and infections. So stress is very, very important. And it's important to really understand it because it does affect our body in so many different ways. And burnout can be, can be classified as a collection of symptoms, including fatigue, sleep struggles, brain fog, just to name a few. And if this if burnout is left unchecked, it can lead to worsening symptoms and lead to adrenal fatigue. And adrenal fatigue is a more severe collection of those symptoms, and it's caused by a cortisol imbalance and an HPA axis dysregulation. HPA, HPA stands for hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis. And these are three aspects in our body that work together. Our adrenals are the little triangles that sit above our kidneys and they produce cortisol, which is our primary stress hormone. And when there's a dysregulation, it can cause a cortisol imbalance, which is a driving force between low energy and sleep issues. But cortisol is important to your body because it is needed to wake up in the morning and get through it throughout the day, but it becomes a problem when it's unbalanced. So in my case, for example, in my health journey, my cortisol was extremely low in the morning. And that was actually why it was so hard. And I felt like I was hit by the train all the time and trying to get up in the morning. So working on regulating that cortisol is really important. And there are two primary drivers between a, behind adrenal fatigue. It's stress and lack of adequate sleep. So stress, Stephanie, what do you think that stress is in your opinion? Well, having taken three different stress management courses, um, stress can be positive stress or negative stress, but um, the stressors are the biggest problem. So like, for example, one of my biggest stressors is money fears. And that one comes up all the time. And so that's something I've been working on and trying to heal. But that one causes all kinds of um, arguments with my partner and even stress-related anxiety because of that financial, like the burdens and everything. So that would be a very good example of a stressor. Um, but then you stress, the positive stress is more of like the happy things in your life that are challenging you and they might be a little bit stressful, but they're positive. So like a good example of that is like a new opportunity, a new job can be really stressful getting into it, but it's also a positive thing to improve your financial outlook and your ability to live in the world. Right. Yeah. So like what you're describing as stress is actually emotional stress. They're actually different types of stress as well. And then in the positive stress, it's important, you know, like you have like stress, it gives you motivated, it gives you, you know, that drive, but having that un un unbalance of that stress is where it leads to issue. So first I want to categorize stress into two categories and then talk about, there's actually four types of stressors in our body. So first there's the acute high stress, which is your flight or fight that's when we're, you know, responding to dangerous situations or something that's the quick. But we have chronic low levels of constant stress that are bombarding our bodies all day long. We're dealing with burn, uh, putting out fires, the, the, the financial stress, all of these different stresses in our lives cause an issue in our body and it taxes and takes a toll in our body. And it can cause dysregulation and hormonal imbalances. And hormones play a really important part in our health, mental focus, cognition, cardiovascular health, and metabolism, just to name a few. And hormones have a symbiotic relationship with one hormones to another. So when one is out of balance, it can cause issues in another area. 
So for example, there's, I like to think of it as like a little triangle. So there's the thyroid hormones, adrenal hormones, and your sex hormones, which is your estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. And so when one is out of balance, it can cause an issue in others as well. And also about the la lack of adequate sleep, it's another driver for adrenal fatigue and it causes a positive feedback loop feeding to each other and causing this vicious cycle. So we talked about stress and there's different types of stress. So we have one, the emotional stress is the overwhelm, the busy lifestyle, the modern life, the fast paced, busy lifestyle we have. And that can be a chronic low levels of stress, but there are also three other stressors in our body. The next one is biotoxin stress. That's viruses, bacteria, and infections that can, they can be low grade. You don't necessarily have to have a fever, but it can just cause a myriad of symptoms. You don't feel well, you're foggy, you're exhausted, you're fatigued. And there's also environmental toxins. Environmental toxins are everywhere today. They're in our skincare products, they're in our household products, every product we use, the air we breathe, the water, everything. And these toxins can place a stress on our body as well. And lastly, there's um, a food type of stress, which is inflammatory foods. If they're processed foods or if there is a foods that we're inflamed to, it's not necessarily like your quick peanut allergy that causes hives. It can be a delayed reaction several days later, which can cause inflammation and stress in the body. So as you can see, there are so many different ways that our bodies are bombarded with stress in so many different levels. Most definitely. So we were talking about three steps to reduce burnout. I'm curious about the steps and also um, if you could bring in a little bit more about each step and like, what does it look like in a daily practice? Yeah. So there is a holistic approach to addressing this adrenal fatigue. It's a foundational approach to healing. And it first discovers with finding the root cause and customizing health plans to guide you in your journey of healing and achieving optimal health. So the first step would actually be functional medicine testing. This is a crucial first step. And it's a foundation of understanding where your current health levels are at. These tests are aided to discover the root cause of fatigue. Check your cortisol levels because that's very important to understand your stress hormone and discover what other hormones are impacted by that stress. And this first step is our building block to the journey of rebalancing your hormones, getting those fatigue to understand what is going on with your fatigue. The next step, step two, would be optimizing nutrition and nutrients. So optimizing nutrition is the key factor in supporting our body and the healing process. Having a balanced, nutrient-rich regime is one less stress on the body and can help heal your body. Don't underestimate the healing power of foods. As Hippocrates once said, let food be thy medicine. Food is very powerful and medicinal to healing, and there are two aspects to nutrition and hydration, which is hydration and, and blood sugar regulation. So hydration is really important for maintaining your electrolytes balanced. And as we talked about earlier, if you drink a lot of coffee regularly, the caffeine is very dehydrating to the body. And as a result, it's very important to hydrate the body. Also, our blood sugar regulation is a really important aspect to focus on as well. So let me ask you this, Stephanie, have you had an experience any of these? Have you been so busy and you just forget to eat and go all and forget to eat? You're so busy. Not usually. Uh, my stomach won't let me do that. <laughs> but sometimes uh, when I get involved in something, it happens. Yeah. Or you're eating too quickly or in a stressed out situation. Mm hmm. So those issues, um, they can spike and drop our blood sugar. And that yo-yoing effect is another stressor in our body that we don't want to have. We already have all these stressors and, on our body. So having, you know, balancing your blood sugar is really important to stabilize. And it's one less stress, one less burden on our body. So the next piece will be optimizing the nutrients. And that's important because stress actually depletes our micronutrients in our body. 
And micronutrients are our vitamins and minerals that are really essential to the functioning of our bodies. And stress robs this, so it's important to supplement and optimize the nutrients so it's one less stress on our body. And lastly, managing our stress levels. Most of us, because of the putting out fires, a busy, fast-paced life, we really neglect to take care of ourselves. We put all of our energy, time, focus into our lives, into um, our family, to everything else, but we neglect to take care of ourselves, and that can cause serious health consequences. So we keep pushing ourselves through, we, we push through that burnout, and we burn ourselves out, we burn our candle at the boat ends. And if we do that, it's going to have a diminishing impact in your health, in your life, in your happiness. So a few self-care self techniques are massage, meditating. So really important, these techniques make you more resilient so that can help lower your stress levels and another one less stress on our bodies. Awesome. Thank you. And I'm curious, how does your practice support these steps? How does naturopathic medicine? Yeah. So in my practice, I'm a mobile online physician. So if you're in Arizona, I come to you in mobile and then we do stuff online. So it's really, really important. You know, there's three phases that I like to take. I call my patients health participants because they actively participate in their health. They are not alone on this journey. I am there for them to guide them through this because a lot of it is it's so easy to fall off the rails. So in phase one, we're really trying to figure out what's like the root cause. So in the phase one, we, we have a deep dive. There's a very comprehensive intake form because you really wanna figure out all these different aspects to our health and to our lives. And from there, we're able to figure out what's going on with your health. And then if there's necessary, we figure out if there's any testing or any specialty testing you might need to do to dive deep more to figure out what's happening in the body. And in the phase two, that's when we really dive deep, we figure out what are the different pieces, how we can help support nutrition, lifestyle changes, all these different aspects to really help heal the body. And from there, once we really have this solidified and you're good, we have our, those health goals in check and we have those health challenges dealt with, then we enter phase three, which was giving you lifestyle habits to be able to sustain this for a lifetime. Beautiful. I think that this is so needed in this world today. And the more that we encourage this healing and allow people to understand that firstly, that we are really stressed and that even if it's a low level stress, it can cause long-term damage that these messages I, like it just are so timely, so necessary. I would love for you to share a final thought, a little piece of ins inspiration for our audience. Yeah. So a final thought and inspiration would be, you are worth it. You are worth it. Don't put your health on the back burner because if you do, you won't be able to show up and be present. You won't be able to be there for your family, for your business, for everything. You are worth it. Don't neglect yourself because our health is really important to us. It's very important. You'll actually feel healthy, happy, all these different things once we have our health. So once again, you are worth it. Awesome. And so how can people reach you? Yeah, so people can find me in several different ways. One, I have a website, www.drcrowley.com, D-R-C-R-O-W-L-E-Y.com. I'm on social media as well. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn as well. And you always feel, feel free to send me questions or any messages. I'll be happy to help. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Rachel. This was a, an enlightening conversation. And I cannot wait to share this. Uh, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, this is a weekly podcast. So look for the Wellness Wednesdays with Stephanie podcast on YouTube, as well as the podcast channels. Thanks, Rachel. Thank you.